Welcome to the online services from Johns Creek Presbyterian Church. Friends, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Today we have a special guest preacher, the Reverend Ben Mathis. Ben is finally retiring completely, but Ben founded Rivers of the World, or Roe, which later became Mission Hope. Uh, ben always shares some exciting stories from the mission field, so you will not want to miss his message for us today. If you have children with you, you can click the children's icon for some wonderful interactive worship resources for you and for your kids. Uh, if you want to give now to support the generous uh, ministry of Johns Creek Presbyterian Church, just click the Give Now icon at the bottom of the page at any time. Friends, let's prepare our hearts together as we come to worship God. Would you join with me in the call to worship? Wake up, no more dozing off. The time is now. The kingdom is here. There are songs to be sung, chains to be broken, children to be loved, hungry to be fed. It's time to come alive. We are somebody. God's people, empowered and blessed, called and sent, wake up, sing, pray, act. Brothers and sisters, when we come to this place to worship, we do so with full hearts, but we want to do so with open and honest hearts too. And so we turn to God ready to confess that we are broken people in need of a God to restore that relationship between us and one another. Let us go to God in our prayer of confession as printed on your screen. Merciful God, Forgive us when we feel that we have little to give. Help us to remember the widow's gifts and all the little gifts of love given to us that made a difference in our lives. May we in turn give generously to others in the name of Christ. We pray this in his strong name. 
Amen. The good news is that when we turn away from our sin and toward our loving God, God is there ready to embrace us, running toward us with the love that we do not deserve, but that he longs to give us. Brothers and sisters, in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Good morning, church. It's good to be with you today. I'd like us to go to the Lord in prayer, and then let's go to his word. We've got two incredible passages to look at this morning, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Let's pray together. Our Father and our God, we ask that you clear our hearts and minds of the cares of this day. Let us come to your word expecting to be fed. For Jesus' sake, amen. We're in the sixth chapter of Exodus this morning. We're looking at verses 6 through 9. I want to start in verse 9 and work our way backwards. Let's listen to the Word of God. Moses reported this to the Israelites, but they didn't listen to him because of their discouragement and cruel bondage. What in the world did Moses say? Let's go back up to verse 6 and listen again to the Word of God. This is God speaking to Moses, and he says, Therefore... Say to the Israelites, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. I will free you from being slaves to them, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with mighty acts of judgment. I will take you as my own people, and I will be your God. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God, who brought you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. The word of the Lord. Now let's flip over to the sixth chapter of Matthew's gospel, and I'm going to paraphrase it because that's more fun. This is Jesus speaking, very familiar. You've heard Jesus say this before. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything's going to be all right. Amen. Now let's have a little history lesson. There was Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob wrestles with the angel of the Lord, and his name gets changed to Israel. That means he who wrestles with God. He's got 12 sons that we know of, and he has one daughter named Dinah. Of all of his sons, his very favorite was a little boy named Joseph. Love Joseph. 
Well, all the big brothers were jealous of the little brothers, so the big brothers did what little brothers have never wanted them to do before. Did you get that? The big brothers sold the little brother into slavery and just got rid of the brat. Hmm. Now, there's 60 or 70 members in their family at this time. They are called the Israelites. They're wandering in an area of the world that's called Canaan. There's a famine in the land, and they've got to go somewhere. So they head west, and they go into Egypt only to discover that little brother Joseph, who had been sold into slavery, is now number two in command of all of Egypt. This could go pretty bad, but it doesn't. He welcomes them with open arms, and they live happily ever after. Now jump ahead 430 years to our text today. There's no longer 60 or 70 Israelites. There's two or three million of them. They are powerful and strong, and Pharaoh is scared to death of these people. He's not convinced they'll have his back if there's an uprising. So Pharaoh, who's pretty conniving, sets out to do two things. He is literally going to work the Israelites so hard that they'll be too tired to have any more children, and he enslaves them. Wow. When I go 7,000 miles to the west, and you hit the Laredo region of a country called Peru. Now, this is home, as you know, it's home of the Apiyaku River. It's home of the village of Comandancia. And I know you know that this is also the home of King Wawa of the Yagua Indians. I have an audience with the king. He shows up in his full regalia. His crown is made of the tail feathers of macaw parrots. He's wearing the bones of a bushmaster snake around his neck. All of his exposed skin is painted red, and he's wearing a grass skirt. He's followed by an entourage of warriors who are pounding drums and playing pan flutes. They march up to me, and they stop, and the king says, I have something to tell you. I said, tell it. This is so profound. He looked at me and said, I want you to know that we are more than pictures in a book. Wow. We laugh, we love, we cry, and we pray for America. You tell them that. And I said, okay. And then he started telling me about all the things happening in our country. And I said, King, how do you get your news out here in the jungle? And he explained to me that a fast boat going by might have a newspaper. Somebody takes the newspaper, they roll it up, throw it up on the bank of the river. Somebody finds it, they read it, and they share the news with everybody, and that's how they keep up with what's happening in the world. When I go 10,000 miles to the east and you hit an active volcano named Mount Agung in Indonesia, a pickup truck is bouncing down a dirt road on the far side of Mount Agung. A magazine is either tossed out the window or falls out the back of the truck, sort of like the newspaper in Peru. A young girl named Chica finds the magazine, and it changes her life forever. She looks in the magazine, and she sees girls wearing beautiful clothes and makeup, and she decides right then and there that she will have beautiful clothes and makeup. So Chica leaves her home village of Tianyar, She goes to the capital city of Denpizar. She gets a job in a restaurant. She makes money. She buys beautiful clothes and makeup, and she'd live happily ever after. Well, no. See, the owner of the restaurant is sort of like Pharaoh. He's he's pretty conniving. And he goes to Chica, and he says, Oh, Chica, one of the girls didn't show up to do the folk dance. Could you wear this costume and go and dance? And she says, Oh, I'll be glad to do that. So she dances at the other restaurant, makes more money, buys more clothes and makeup. A few months later, he comes to her again and says, Oh, Chica, one of the girls didn't show up at the other restaurant. Could you wear this outfit and go and dance? And this outfit is pretty skimpy. But she decides, you know, he's been so good to me, I guess I might as well. So she puts on the outfit. She goes and discovers that she's dancing at what they call a go-go club. She's dancing in a glass cage. And before she knows it, she's being sold to five and six different men a night. 6,000 miles to the west is the Aturi Forest of Northeast Congo. Very little sunshine, horrible diet, genetics have all combined to create a, a people group who are tiny that are called the pygmies. There are still tribes who hunt the pygmies for their meat. 
The Mokpala are a tribe who have enslaved great numbers of the pygmies. They want their land. If you call the Mokpala on it, they'll say, no, 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 no. No, we pay them for everything they do. The classic response is a pygmy grandmother who is less than four feet tall, who put 125 pounds of bananas on her back, hiked miles through the forest to deliver it to the Mokpala, and they paid this dear woman with two tiny bananas. 1,380 miles south by southeast is Tanzania. A single mother works for a month to make $15, 50 cents a day. She can't feed her family with that. Her best friend tells her, you know, if you will go 4,800 miles to the east to a city called Bangkok, Thailand, you can get a job as a hostess in a restaurant. They will pay you $500 a month. She lets her sponsors fly her to Bangkok. And in less than a month, they have taken her passport, sold her into prostitution, and told her if she wants her passport back, she has to pay them seven thousand dollars the estimate is that somewhere between 21 and 46 million people in this world are being held in some form of human trafficking or slavery today but i'm going to say that number is a lot higher than that because it does not include those of us who are held in some kind of spiritual slavery you know john's creek i have known you i don't know how I guess since we were just in the little house in the back. So I, I don't think you'll think I'm bragging, you, but you may, you may not know this about me. But I, um, until very recently, I happened to have a, uh, a pretty successful strawberry farm up in northeast Georgia. I, um, well, I had one plant, and until last week, the thing just wouldn't die. But I think it has finally died, one plant. But every year, I mean, every year, I got somewhere between three and I don't know, maybe five strawberries a year. It, it's a big deal. I would watch each strawberry, and when it got just right, I would pick it, put it in the refrigerator, and the next morning, drop it in my smoothie. I mean, it was a big deal. Well, I had this strawberry just coming on, and I went out to check on the thing, and something had taken a bite out of the side of my strawberry. Didn't eat the whole thing, took one little bite, and now the thing is full of ants. And I looked at that and I thought, you know, well, of all the nerve, if you're going to let me eat the thing, don't just take a bite out of it. Well, it happened to two more of my strawberries. That's almost my whole crop. And by now, I, I'm good and offended. So I took my have a heart trap. You know what that is. And I filled it full of peanut butter, took it out onto the patio, and I'm going to catch this villain. I set it out overnight, and the next morning, I had him. Walked out there and stuffed into my have a heart trap is an obese gray possum. This thing is so fat, he can't turn around. All he can do is twist his head and look up at me like, this isn't going to end good, is it? Well, I sat down beside him and I told him everything I've ever wanted to tell a possum. When I finished, I picked up the cage, I walked it off into the woods, I opened it up and said, now go and get. He just sat there. I said, go, you're free, go and get out of here. He looks at me like, if I step out of this cage, you're going to shoot me. I said, I'm not going to shoot you, you're free, and I go on and go. I nudged him with the back of my shoe. He just sat there. I said, you're just big and fat, you're not stuck. He finally steps out of the trap. He sits there for a minute, and then he breaks into what I guess you would call a a classic possum trot and he's waddling off into the forest and as he did I thought you know what that's the people of Israel that's the people of Israel that I've named him Israel I said but that's the people of Israel they are so used to being discouraged and brokenhearted and kept in a trap that they can't hear the Lord saying but I came to set you free and then I thought you know what that's Chica why in the world doesn't Chica run away from that glass cage? It's the pygmies. Why don't they make little bitty bow and arrows and little bitty machetes and fight for their freedom? It's, it's, it's the Tanzanian mother. Why doesn't she go to somebody's embassy and stand there and scream until somebody helps her? And then it dawned on me, it's us. 
mean, why in the world do you allow guilt to be a way of life? Why do you act old? And who, who told you how you're supposed to act? Why do you do that? I mean, why pray when you can spend all day long just worrying about stuff? Sure, well, you can be creative, but it's so much easier to be cynical. Why get better when you can just stay bitter? So some of you may know, actually know my neighbor. His name is Dub Anderson. Dub goes to Peachtree Presbyterian. Dub went to University of Georgia. Uh, go dogs. <laughs> and when he graduated, he went to his mother and said, Mama, I'm going to go to New York City and seek my fame and fortune in advertising. She had the most wonderful response. She went, oh, you can't go to New York City. We're having meatloaf tomorrow. <laughs> Honest. Well, he went, had a big time, came back, and Dub has a son named Benji. Now, Benji just sold his heritage hog farm, or as Benji puts it, these are pigs that live a pretty good life. He had a problem. He realized he had to get the pigs up to three or 400 pounds before he could sell them and make any money. Well, when they got that big, he couldn't get them into the back of his truck to take them off to market. He thought about it for a while, and Benji finally figured out how to take 1.7 ounces to move 400 pounds of pig. He didn't feed them for two days. Then he put a ramp from the ground up to the back of the truck and into the cage. And then Benji lined the ramp with Krispy Kreme donuts that weigh 1.7 ounces apiece, and the pigs would simply eat their way right up the ramp into the cage and off to market, and aren't we just like that? Isn't that us? Oh, I'll just, I'll just have a little greed. I'll just have a little lust. I'll just be angry for a season. I'll just act old because somebody told me I should. And all the time, God is saying, but I've come to set you free. You know, thank goodness the people of Israel finally heard it, didn't they? And where are they? They're in the promised land. Chica met Angela on our staff. They developed a trusting relationship. Chica was led to the Lord by Angela, who then talked her into leaving human trafficking, moved her into our safe house. She has a job at one of our coffee shops. She's making money. She loves the Lord. She's free, and she still buys beautiful clothes and makeup. Justin Wren heard about the pygmies and moved in with them. Justin Wren is bigger than your pastor and me put together. This man is huge. He has hair out to here and a beard that goes the rest of the way. And of all things, Justin Wren was a world champion mixed martial artist. He lives with the pygmies because he discovered that there's something the Mokpala want more than they want land. The Mokpala want water. So using the living water of Jesus Christ as his example, Justin Wren negotiates with the Mokpala, gets them to give the land and freedom back to the pygmies. In return, he drills a well on their land so that they've got clean water, but at the same time drills one for the pygmies, and he's there leading the pygmies to Christ, and they are now free. And I met Irene in Bangkok. Irene's from Australia. She met the Tanzanian mother, and Irene raised the $7,000 to buy that woman her freedom. She bought her a plane ticket back to Tanzania. She got a grant for $1,500 so the Tanzanian mother can go home with money in her pocket, enough to start her own business, and in doing so, she led that woman to renew her relationship with Jesus, and now all those people love the Lord, and they are free. So wherever you are right now, say amen. You can, you're home. Say it really loud. Now, if we were Pentecostal, this is where Heidi would take off on the music, and for the next 30 minutes, even though you're at home, we'd all be up dancing and praising the Lord. But, but well, I mean, I mean, we're Presbyterian. <laughs> so you just stay at home and think, well, well, isn't that nice? Let me ask you something. Why do you come to church? Even on Facebook, why do you come to church? Well, 
Ben, I go to church because if I want Sunday supper, I have to go to church first. I go to church because Mama said we're going to church. I go to church usually to get to hear Pastor Gray and Heidi and the music to pray and hear the word. I go to church to be with my family and my friends. Do you ever go to church thinking, what if it were today? What if it were today that the switch got flipped and the lights came on? I once was blind, but now I see. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was a slave, but now I'm free. Again, even though you're at home, or maybe this will even be easier, when I count to three, I want you to say your name right out loud. Okay, let's try this. One, two, three. Okay, very good. Again, since you're at home, get a pencil. You're going to want to write this down. Her name is Bernice Reagan Johnson. Oh, my goodness. Bernice sings basically a cappella with her friends, and she sings as if they are standing in a cotton field in Sharkey County, Mississippi, at the end of a very long, hot July day. And she sings a song that says, I feel better, so much better, since I laid my burdens down. Oh, I feel better, so much better. Since I laid my burden down. What's your burden? What, what is the thing that keeps you from having a, a full relationship with Jesus? What's the thing that keeps you in the trap with the possum and the pig? Is it a, a, a memory? Long time ago, it still haunts you? An addiction? Is it lust or greed? Are you angry? Are you anxious? You don't seem to be able to shake off your worries because of everything happening now when all the time God is saying, but I've come to set you free. See, God's word speaks to us as a people. In this instance, the text is the Israelites. But he also speaks to us as individuals. So let's do this. I'm going to reread the text to you, but instead of saying, God said to Moses, go tell the Israelites, I'm going to say, God said to Moses, go tell, say your name, and I want you to say your name right out loud. Again, we're not in church. You can do this and get away with it, and I won't tell anybody. Let's try this. God said to Moses, go tell, say your name. I have come to set you free from the burden of, think about your burden. I have come to deliver you, literally to snatch you back from your burden. Think about your burden. I have come to redeem you, which means literally to pay the price for you with my outstretched arm. That's Jesus. Wow. You know, there's nothing we can do right now except I want to stop and I want us to pray together. Because I want this to be today. Today, in the midst of all that's happening in our society and all the burdens we've got, I want us to go to the Lord right now, and I want you to pray that we take that burden and set it down wherever you are and leave it on the floor. You can clean that and mess up later. Let's go to the Lord and pray right this second. Father, there are some of us who have carried burdens on our hearts for years, and we are sick of it. We wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning. We stay awake till 5 o'clock in the morning. We toss and we turn and we fret. And Lord, that's not giving us a way to love you and love one another. So Lord, in the strong name of Jesus, we take the burden of our life and we lay it on the floor of wherever we are and we leave it there. Thank you, Jesus. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Whew. All right, you just took a setback. You've turned it into a comeback. Now what do you do with that? You do exactly what Jesus said. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything is going to be all right. That has to begin with prayer. It has to begin with prayer. This afternoon, when you get up off the couch from taking your nap because you're falling asleep now, do not start off by praying, oh, Lord, take this burden from me. Don't do that. You've already done it. Instead, pray, Lord Jesus, thank you. That burden is gone. I'm ready to live my life. Start that way and build those prayers into every day of your life, giving thanks that that burden is finally gone. 
You know, I hike. That's what I do in the midst. I, I do it every day, about five miles. While I hike, I have two different places that I pray or I quote scripture to myself. While I hike, I chant, Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me. And I do that over and over and over again. And I look up and I've gone miles and nothing has disturbed the peace that is within me. I build God's word into my hiking. And I, like I say, the 23rd Psalm, I say that probably five times a day, different ways. And I just stop, I sit on a wall and I say that, build God's word into your life that way. And then I want you to do something for me. The next time you see Pastor Gray, I want you to ask him four words. That's all. You can remember this. I want you to ask him four words. How can I help? Because you see, God does not set us free from the possum trap of life just to go waddling off in the forest and hide. No, he sets us free so that we can announce that freedom to those around us. He sets us free and blesses us so we can be a blessing to somebody else. And I just can't think of anything better than that. Can you? Oh, God bless you. You stay strong. And God bless America. Let's pray together. Father, we feel better. <laughs> So much better since we laid our burdens down. We feel better, so much better since we laid our burdens down. And now, Father, direct us, guide us, help us to share our freedom that others might be free in the name of Jesus and truly, truly be free. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Brothers and sisters, when we come to the end of our time together, when we have heard the word read and proclaimed, as was beautifully done today by Ben Mathis, we are ready to respond to God's word in the world. We do that by living our lives, by giving generously, and by stating what it is that we believe as followers of Christ with our whole lives and with our words. Please join me in the words of our affirmation of faith as it is printed on your screen in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, I don't know about you, but I find myself praying often these days with so many things going on in our world. This is something we can do not only alone, but together as the body of Christ. So I invite you to join with me in our pastoral prayer as we remember those concerns on our hearts for not only ourselves, but for those around us. Let us join together in prayer. Gracious and loving God, when we look around us and see the struggles of our world, we often don't know what to say or what to pray for. As Christians, we are reminded of the words of Paul in his letter to the church at Rome, reminding us that your whole creation has been groaning right up to the present time. Lord, we too groan inwardly because we don't know what to say, though we know things are not the way they are supposed to be. Paul also reminds us in his letter that your Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness when we don't know the words to pray or to say, and we find ourselves simply groaning. And as Paul reminds us, your Holy Spirit intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. So, Holy God, pray for us 
grown for us as we pray for ourselves and for our world. And yet we know that in all things, even those things we don't yet understand, you promise that you can work through these things to bring about good. So Lord, bring out the good according to your purpose in these events of our world. And let us never forget that neither death nor life, nor angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And now we boldly pray the prayer our Lord Jesus taught his disciples, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Last Sunday, we invited our members to do something new. We called it a drive-by offering. Uh, Many folks came by the church between 10 a.m. and noon, not only to bring their gifts in support of what God's doing here at Johns Creek Presbyterian Church, they also received a blessing or were prayed for. Uh, They had a chance to receive a wonderful CD of comforting music that they could share with others, and they also had the chance to help out and bring gifts of canned goods or a monetary gift to one of our partnership ministries, Hands of Christ. It was a great day. In fact, it was so good that we want to do it again next Sunday on June the 21st, again from 10 until noon. I know it's Father's Day, but we want to invite you to come by again. Uh, You can do it safely from your car, but it's a wonderful way to experience fellowship and connection with others. That's next Sunday. Uh, If you want to give a gift to the church, you can do that a number of ways. You can do it with the Give Now icon at the bottom of the page. 
You can mail in a check to the church office. The address is at the end of this video, or you can drop it by any time in the drop box just outside of our Welcome Center. But friends, we need your gifts to continue to do God's work in our community and in the world. So thank you for your generous giving. All right, I'm going to charge you to take a deep breath before we leave this place. Come on. Fill your life and your lungs with hope. For you go from this place with the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. You go from here with the love of God the Father Almighty. You go and you remain in the fellowship of his Holy Spirit this day and forevermore. Amen.